G'day, I'm sitting here in the Brumby today because I've got a problem with my charger. I've got a new charger, it works a bit differently to the old charger, and so I'm going to do a video to show you how it all works. But first I thought I might go through the history of chargers with this, with this vehicle. So I first converted it in 2013, and when I did that it had lead acid batteries. So it had 12, 12 volt batteries, which makes 144 volts. And so I, I bought a, a 144 volt lead acid charger to, to charge it up. Now that charger was draws probably about six amps, so it's reasonably slow, but at the time I only had a 13 kilowatt hour pack, and so it was good enough for that. Now, after the lead acid batteries uh, started to die, which was I think 2015, I went to a, a lithium ferrophosphate um, battery pack, so LFP, that was 20 kilowatt hours. I, I really wanted to charge it up a bit quicker and I needed a, a lithium charger which has a bit of a different charge curve. So then I bought myself a TC charger. It's back here, we'll have a look at it in a minute. Uh, the TC charger draws two amps or so, so it's probably about two kilowatts. No, not two amps, sorry, draws 10 amps, just under 10 amps, about nine. So it's about two kilowatt charger, something like that. And so I installed that for a while, and then eventually I put the lead acid charger in as well. So then I had both of them. So you could either charge with just the, the TC charger or the, the yellow, old yellow charger as well. It, I don't know the brand of the lead acid charger, so I call it the yellow one. This is my TC charger here, the lithium charger I bought. It's got the cover off it at the moment because I've got problems with it. So there's the circuitry inside. There's quite a lot of fault finding information online. There's some people done some really good work, in, including getting circuit diagrams and all sorts of help to, to fix them. I did go through a fair bit of that. I thought I'd fixed it at one stage and eventually, no, it wasn't fixed. <laughs> it, it broke itself again, I think. So the problem I've got at the moment is with this backboard at the at back there. So that's the, the main circuitry CPU type stuff and apparently that's quite difficult to fix so I won't bother fixing it anymore. Now with this one, there, let's see, so we've got AC in and then you've got DC out and then you've got to, you can control the amount of current that you're delivering with an enable line and that comes out of this connector here. So the enable line in this particular model was a naught to five volts thing. So you give it naught, zero volts, and the charger will turn off. You give it five volts, the charger will go flat out, and you proportion it in between those two, and it'll change the current that you're delivering to the, the battery pack. So that's very useful with a, a lithium ferrophosphate battery pack because you need to balance it at high voltages, which means when you get almost full, you want to turn down the current and leave it down at a low current for a fair while, while the, the BMS balances the cells. So the method I had to charge this car was pretty simple. So in here is a standard 10 amp plug. You pull it out like that and you plug it into the, the wall over there. Simple. Now this one here see I put it into the fuel bowser spot uh, so it just sort of sits in there sits closed like that that one just 10 amps so that one was for the TC charger the faster charger now when I put in the lead acid charger at as well as the TC charger I could charge with both charges at the same time and therefore get a faster charging current and so what I did was I put a separate circuit separate AC circuit in here and so what you had here was a, an inlet there, and so I could plug in uh, an extension cord there and you could run both of the charges at the same time. In behind here, two RCDs. Uh, the person, person who um, certified the build required RCDs in there, which is fair enough. So it's your input there into one and then the other one. So I've, I've disconnected it at the moment because I'm in the middle of doing stuff. Now this is my new charger. This is an N power charger. Uh, so reasonably cheap, available through a distributor within Australia, AusDIY. 
which is very nice. Now this one has various cables here. So you've got your DC out. This will go up to 180 volts, this one. Your AC in. And you've got these various connectors. Now these connectors here, these four, are not in the manual. They're, they've got different connectors in the manual. So I had to, to ring up to find out what they were. This one here with the red and the blue wires is 12 volts out. Now they're quite thick wires. It looks like it could supply a fair bit of current, but the, the distributor tells me that it won't. It's uh, apparently only, only a few milliamps. You can perhaps run a small relay. He said that's about it, which would have been nice to run my contactor off it, but I can't. What else do we have here? This one, this triangle one here is for uh, an LED extension light. So we've got our red, green and yellow LED here. That there is a red, green and yellow LED on the, the charger itself. But if you want a, a remote one, they give you this one with it. The next one is this one here. Now, hang on, we'll go to the, the orange and gray cable first. That one's a, a contact closure. So when you apply the AC 240 volts, that contact opens or does it close? I can't remember. It either opens or closes, uh, which gives you something that you could, for instance, run a, a lockout so that when you've got 240 volts into the car, you can't drive. The other one which is the interesting one for me at the moment is the CAN communications. So I can't get a charger these days with an enable line like I did on the TC charger. They all talk CAN bus. Now I haven't used CAN bus before. It's a protocol that's often used in vehicles and I have no experience with it. So this is my uh, chance to, to get some, some experience with CAN bus. Now, what do I, what did I want to do? So with the, the, the reason I want to turn it down is, is if there's something wrong in, with the BMS. So if the BMS says there's something wrong with the battery, we need to be able to turn the charger off. Now my BMS, I could potentially reprogram it to talk can, but I decided not to. Instead, I decided to purchase something. And so what I've bought is a Thunderstruck Electric Vehicle Charge Controller, or EVCC. This is a, a neat little device. You've got two connectors here. This one here is powering the thing itself, and then that loop is your BMS. So I can have a pre fairly simple BMS uh, interface into this, so just the loop's connected or the loop's not. If it's connected, then everything's fine, and if it's disconnected, then there's something wrong and you should stop the charger and then your CAN bus uh, low and high there, uh, and there's an output there as well. So this here talks to the charger with that CAN bus, and so this thing can control the charger and, and tell us what to do. The other part of it is these ones here. These ones are to interface with a Type 2 inlet. And so I've bought myself a Type 2 inlet. Here it is. And so in theory, this little charge controller will vary the current delivered by the charger to match what I'm plugging into. So if I use, for instance, my Hyundai EVSE here, which is a 10 amp version, it can only go up to 10 amps, then if I plug that in using that plug, There are communications lines in here. These two up the top here is for communications. This EVCC will know that we should only charge, we should only draw 10 amps and it should all do it automatically with that, that handy little electronic device there. So this little electronic device does require some setting up and so that's what we'll be going into next. I'll show you how I've managed to connect to it so far. I'm not sure that I mentioned before, but the reason why I was looking in the tray here is because the charger's set up underneath the tray. So I've got a bit of form ply timber up 
underneath the tray which makes it quite nice to screw things to so you can see the yellow charger there is screwed on with a couple of tech screws the tc charger was over here where the connector is and i'm hopefully going to be able to put the the new n power charger up under here as well the gray box there has some electronics in it to do with the controlling the bms the bms controlling the old chargers and the new one and i might have to put another box in there for the EVCC. So I'm getting set up here to connect the EVCC to the N power charger. So the N power charger there, I've got it connected to the 240 volts. Or oh, it's plugged there through some cables into that 15 amp power point. So if I turn that on. The fan comes on and then we get a flashing sequence of lights. The fan goes off after a bit. So what's our sequence? Red, green, yellow, yellow, yellow. And if you go and look that up in the user manual, then it says something like battery not connected. And there's our external LED. It's not terribly bright, I must say. I've got some other connections to do. So the EVCC is in a neat little box, not waterproof, which means I'm going to have to put it in a box later, but um, it's quite nice in that it, they've um, labelled all the connectors here and they've got a, a quite easy to use connector here. You bear off some of the wire and just push it in and it hangs onto it. They even include a tool, which you can use to take that wire out again. So for the moment, I'm just going to connect up the, uh, so what do they call it? The ground and the ignition. The ignition is what you need to, to run it. I've also got the can blue and green in there at the moment there not connected to anything so that's the other end of the can for the moment the other end of the um, the power is going into our 12 volt power supply here so i'll turn this on 12 volts and this is turned on the green lights on and after a minute i think it will start to flash there we go so it's tried to talk to various things and it's showing its own error message now. So, so now I've got that powered, I want to communicate to it, communicate with it via the, the laptop. And so you use this cable. So it's a USB one end, plug it into the laptop. And the other end is actually a headphone jack, uh, but that's what they use for communications. So make sure you buy the cable from Thunderstruck because I don't know what's in here, whether it's just plain RS-232 or what it is. Now I've plugged into the laptop. We need a serial communications program to talk RS-232 to the EVCC. Now I'm using Linux here. I looked up on the Thunderstruck website. They have heaps of information on how to get this going, uh, including all sorts of drivers and things. I looked at that, thought, oh gee, that's all complicated. And I just plugged it in and it just worked, which is fantastic. So let's try this. We go open and then what do I want to do? Yeah, another, so what you do is you type in the, the commands in there. So if we go show, then the EVCC has come back with unknown command because I don't know what I'm doing. But if we do show config perhaps, since you've got old commands there, you can just arrow up and press enter. Oh, I, did, I forgot to mention, this is Qtcom. Uh, Qtcom is a program that you can download for free and it works on Linux. A, 
the one that they recommend or the one that they suggest I think for Windows is called Putty and you could use Hyperterminal, you could use all, any of these sorts of things and yeah go to, go to their website and help file and, and find out how to set it up if it doesn't work straight away like mine did. So what this means is that I am now connected to the EVCC with the computer and so I can configure the EVCC in certain ways uh, and so for instance you can see here we've set it up for 176.3 volts maximum charge voltage which means that the EVCC will tell the charger that that's the maximum charge voltage when it is connected to it. So at the moment it's not connected and so if we go trace trace can then that will show us um, every CAN bus message which is being sent out and at the moment there are none. If I plug in the the can here, so I've, I've got the the um, the charger is still going. The EVCC is obviously still going, and if I plug the two together, then the trace command has done this. So if we just go trace off, so my limited understanding here of what's going on. I don't know much about it at the moment, is that this TSM2500, yeah, so each of these lines is a CAN bus uh, communications uh, message. And the first bit there is the message where it came from. And so the TSM2500, that's what the EVCC thinks we're talking to. So that's the name it's got for our charger. The TSM2500 is actually a Thunderstruck charger, uh, but it seems to use the same communications protocol and the same address. This is the address here. It uses the same address as the NPower one. And so we've set it up for TMS2500 and that's what it thinks it is. So these messages here are coming from uh, the, the NPower charger, which is very nice. One of these, I think, that one is an error message saying we're not connected to anything. The voltage isn't high enough. So what this means is that the the um, the CAN bus is working. So we've got messages going back from one to the other. That means the CAN bus is working, uh, which means we've got it around the right way. I originally had the blue and green around the other way and it didn't work and I just swapped them and it started working. So it looks like you can accidentally have them around the wrong way and it doesn't, doesn't make anything die. So now we've got the charger talking to the controller on the bench, but the charger can't do any charging because it's not connected to the battery. I've got this reasonably short wire here, which I need to connect in underneath there. So the next thing to do, I think, is to install that charger up underneath in place. I'll be able to keep everything else more or less like this so that I can test it on the bench here while the, while the charger itself is under the car.